Welcome! Today we're looking at the very rocky journey that Dark Tide has been on since release. And this is such a tough video because it's a game that I really enjoy and it has a seriously fun combat loop. But the player base in the first three months has dropped over 95% and those players have left for a reason. We are going to examine that three month journey from release and then we are going to look at the current state of Dark Tide after the massive patch in February. So strap in for quite a long video where we go through where Dark Tide was and where it's going. There is so much stuff wrong in Dark Tide, but you don't get to 200 hours played if it's all bad. Let's examine how the core gameplay loop is actually excellent, starting with melee combat. Fat Shark have excelled at melee combat in FPS games, starting with Vermintide 1, continuing with Vermintide 2, and still on display here with Dark Tide. Combinations of light and heavy attacks, stamina for blocks, and a dodge system highlight just some of the melee mechanics in the gameplay. Combining these few different mechanics makes melee combat feel compelling, visceral, and most importantly, satisfying. The Power Sword, for example, is designed for crowd control. Holding a heavy attack allows me to sweep across my targets. I can do about three heavy sweeps before needing to reactivate it, and so I dodge backwards and block as I prepare to repeat this process. Here, against a dangerous melee enemy who can deal a lot of damage, I block and dodge until their attack animation is coming to an end, then I activate my sword and take them down. In this clip I'm using a sword designed to deal huge amounts of damage to single targets, especially if I hit weak points such as the head on these crushers. Even though my sword has got a really good stagger so I can knock my targets off balance, potentially making it so they can't hit me, I still need to dodge the other targets, especially as a crusher can deal a huge amount of damage to me. The players who understand these mechanics can take little to no damage, yet deal with the overwhelming numbers or dangerous foes that Dark Tide is going to throw at you. When you get into the swing of these mechanics and start to master them, it nearly always feels satisfying to annihilate your foes in melee. Part of the fun and replayability factor is finding those weapons that you enjoy to use that fit into your build and playstyle. As melee combat in an FPS game goes, Fat Shark continue to excel here with Dark Tide. Ranged weapons in most cases feel pretty good to use, and there is a variety of different weapons that you can shoot, burn, and generally dismember your enemies with. Of course, some of these weapons are going to be better than others, and having more to choose from would be preferable. The game has released though, with a good selection for you to experiment with. Balancing updates are definitely required for some of those weaker options to put them back in the hands of players. In the game right now though, there are enough good options to fulfil different builds and playstyles. Enemies and yourself will also utilise the cover provided. These engagements with ranged enemies can help to break up the melee horde overwhelming counters. They can be a nice change of pace and require player skill to move past them quickly with minimal team damage. There are also special enemies and elites that can either disrupt your team or have the potential to deal high amounts of damage. This puts some really good pressure on the ranged characters to deal with these targets quickly and efficiently. There is also a need to juggle between ranged weapons and then switch to your melee one to defend yourself. Being good at this and understanding when to use each weapon type and how makes a huge difference to your gameplay. This really rewards good play and player skill. The classes also have very different ranged weapons to choose from, the veteran having a more traditional arsenal compared to the Ogryn with heavier weapons. And you have the Psyker with exotic weapons to choose from which really mix up the different playstyles between the different characters. Dark Tide launched with four classes, and this was really disappointing for fans of the series who were expecting similar to the 15 in Vermintide 2's launch. Each of the launch classes do feel unique in design, but also the role, build and playstyles you will use with them. We also know additional classes or subclasses are coming to Darktide at some point. 
how long it will take for them to arrive and if they're going to be monetized is something we're definitely going to have a look at later on. For now, the launch classes work well together and the game pushes you to work closely as a team. Working together as a team is boosted by a mechanic called coherency. Each class has a temporary shield, which once it goes, you start taking a hell of a lot of health damage. When you are in coherency with an ally, your shield starts to regenerate quicker, and this only boosts even further the more allies you are in coherency with. Each class also has different abilities they can select that often trigger for you and your allies in coherency. This really rewards good team play and sticking together. The coherency bonus, in conjunction with enemies that love them or hate them, will permanently stun you down unless an ally saves you, and a difficulty curve that can seem damn right unfair at times or utterly ludicrous at others. This forces you to work together as a team if you want to win and survive. The difficulty curve in Darktide really helps with that feeling of overcoming insurmountable odds, especially the hardest difficulty, Damnation. My first few runs on this difficulty, I remember thinking the tuning was just completely off. It was crazy hard and I died over and over again. But it made me want to push myself and break through the challenge that it presented. Sometimes a loss will just feel absolutely unfair. The RNG of the game spawning system just throws in a crazy amount of enemies and you go down. This does happen from time to time and sometimes there's just very little you could have done to actually survive that situation. But more often than not, a loss starts with someone making a silly mistake and then it snowballs. I had a lot of lessons along the way where Dark Tide brutally took me down and I had to learn from those mistakes. And the game absolutely punishes you for poor plays and bad decisions. The difficulty always felt it was pushing me to do better, with each loss a lesson on how to improve for next time. The challenge that Damnation represented kept me pushing myself to do better, to get better equipment, to work with my team more and to improve my win ratio. Especially on the map modifier high intensity which just dials everything up to 11 and can brutally take you down in an instant. It feels so good when you take on the high intensity map and you work closely with your team, protecting each other, moving through as a unit and managing the craziness that the game throws at you. It more often than not feels like a triumphant achievement when you beat Damnation high intensity. When Darktide is firing on all cylinders, the gameplay can feel truly awesome and it makes you want to jump into another mission. This is the hallmark of a game that has a good core gameplay loop. We are doing the same thing over and over again, but the game tricks us into enjoying it and feeling like it is different each time. Getting this loop so that it feels fun is one of the most fundamental things to get right in a game. And Darktide really does have it here. As players, we get bored of games when we can start to feel that loop. It starts to feel oppressive and takes us away from the enjoyment factor. Any games developer wants to do as much as possible so that we don't get to that point early. And they do this through really good gameplay, a compelling story, interesting game world and so on. Darktide has that good core gameplay loop. You cannot take that away from the game. It is baked into its core. And it's also set in the 40k universe, a universe which is so rich with the lore, characters and awesome visuals. So why has the player base for Darktide dropped 95% and why all of the negative reviews? To start to understand this, we need to first look at the state of the launch. You can't talk about the release of Darktide without mentioning bugs. On November 30th, 2022, it launched and the 100,000 players who jumped into the game were inundated with server disconnects, crashes to desktop and a whole host of other technical glitches and bugs. 
I was getting crashes to desktop and server disconnects about every three hours on average. This was until the December 15th patch. This dramatically reduced those crashes, although server disconnects were still happening far more frequently than I would have liked. Bugs and especially crashes that make you lose the time you put into a mission and delay your progress are obviously annoying and shatter that immersive feeling. And the more that you keep on seeing them, the more it just wears you down and just annoys you even further. Another thing that doesn't help with these crashes is the loading times are so long, even on an SSD. A crash to desktop or a server disconnect is just so tedious when you have to load back into the game and then load back into a mission and you can literally just feel your time being wasted. But it was an even far bigger issue than the bugs and it almost stopped me playing just after a couple of hours. Low and unstable frames plagued my first few hours with Darktide. Trying to get headshots at 20 FPS was a horrible experience. And like many other players, I decided I had to stop and I would wait for future patches to fix things. A few days later, a friend gave me a modified config file. This basically removed certain textures and effects from the game. With this modified config file, I could just about manage 40 to 60 FPS in the bigger fights just about playable. And lots of people were struggling, even on high-end hardware. The very fact that modified config files were bouncing around the internet and there were articles trying to claw back some kind of performance just shows you that this was one of the biggest challenges that faced the Darktide launch. Armed with a new config file and slightly improved performance, I got back into playing, albeit with all the graphics nuked to oblivion. I went about to level up my first character and enjoy the game, and I did enjoy it, despite the crashes and the bugs. I was straight back into the swing of smashing the hordes of Nurgle, just like I'd done with the pesky rats in Vermintide. The core gameplay loop grabbed me, and I was loving it for the most part. All in all, I enjoyed leveling up my first character and playing the game. And this was despite all of those rough edges, such as difficult to understand weapon descriptions, the bugs, and the crashes. I was still enjoying that core gameplay loop and it was shining brighter than all of the other issues I was facing. Leveling my second character was a different story. The process of doing it ripped open the cracks of Darktide. Each new crack was loaded with player frustration and just complete amazement at design choices that had somehow made it into the game. One of the biggest issues in this game is acquiring new items and this made leveling my Psyker feel woeful. Item progression is nearly entirely linked to a shop that cycles every hour or another one that cycles each day. On a very rare occasion, you will be rewarded an item for actually completing a mission. And that item is probably completely useless because it's all rolled with RNG. That's for the stats, perks and blessings. This makes 95% of the items in the game completely useless. It's extremely rare to actually find an item with the decent stats that you want, let alone if you combine the perks and blessings that you want on that item in addition. The shop issues were only exacerbated with the fact that you got so few items for actually playing the game and completing missions. And Fatshark even engineered some of these issues themselves as they had a throttling system in place. So if getting items so rarely wasn't bad enough, you could actually just hit the cap and then you would get no more items until the next week. This throttling system was in place from launch and it only changed in the massive patch at the end of February. That patch we're going to have a look at later when we examine the current state of Darktide. But at the time that I was leveling my Psyker, just like so many other players, this system combined with the terrible shop led to so many issues that I'm going to explain to you now. Leveling up my first character, I seem to get a new item perhaps every four to five missions. Because my equipment was low quality, I was low level, these new items often gave me something new to try and they were an upgrade to my actual equipment. But my second character, I just got next to none through all 30 levels it takes to get you to max. I was locked into waiting for this refresh each hour in the shop to acquire new items. This is terrible for progression. I'm beholden to the RNG of a shop which rotates each hour. My gameplay and how well I'm doing in missions has very little impact on getting new equipment. 
And so if the shop gives me nothing good, I can continue to progress my character level, but not my equipment power. There is a complete disconnect between leveling your character and the equipment your character will use. Because of this system, I was forced to play lower difficulty missions. I had rubbish equipment and I couldn't push myself onto the more interesting difficulties. This was made even worse as I was used to playing and enjoying the highest difficulty with my veteran, my first character. But now I was stuck doing boring difficulty 3 missions or pushing myself to difficulty 4 and then losing and then just taking even longer to level up. On top of all of this, the very reason I wanted to use the Psycho in the first place was because I'd seen other people using a Lightning and a Fire Staff. I thought they looked exotic and fun to use and that's why the Psycho was my second class to level. And I went through the entire leveling experience, probably about 40 to 50 missions and perhaps 20 to 25 hours of game time. And the shop at the times I was checking never rolled the two weapons I wanted. Not even bad versions of them with low stats, they never rolled. Now this is really unlucky on the RNG, but it can happen and it did happen for me. Not being able to get the weapons I want to use leads us into a second issue. Because I can't get those weapons, I don't want to spend the stingy amount of crafting materials I can acquire to upgrade that rubbish equipment. It takes hours and hours to get enough materials to upgrade an item to max. This made me refuse to spend my precious crafting resources to upgrade terrible items. Each hour the shop would refresh and I would think, this must be the time I get the item I want. I must get that lightning staff. I must get the fire staff. I'll spend those resources on them when they roll. And I'm also ashamed to admit that at points I would log into the shop when I saw the hour had changed, knowing that there was a small chance I could get the item I wanted. This is something that Fat Shark have likely designed into the game in a diabolical way of making us log into the game and effectively engage with it more. But this is an example of the game forcing you to do stuff you don't want to do just so that you can enjoy that core gameplay loop. I'm being forced to play with weapons I don't enjoy and each time I use them I don't like it and every time I fail a mission with this poor equipment it prolongs this terrible levelling experience. This then feels like the game is forcing me to log in as often as possible on that refresh just to see if there's a new item for my progression. And apart from logging in every hour to check the shop, I feel like as a player I have no actions I can take to change that situation. This leaves me stuck grinding difficulty 3, maybe push into difficulty 4 if the TGM just gets so much of doing those boring missions, or I forget just how bad my equipment is. You might be thinking surely this can't get any worse, but it can, because this leads us to a fourth issue in this levelling process, penances. These are achievements that can unlock cosmetics, often requiring the player to do something completely stupid, such as die on purpose, get 20 headshots in a row without missing, or charge through multiple elite enemies at the same time. This makes potential high level players who join your game, who you think might be able to carry you and speed you through this leveling process, actually do really stupid things. They can join the game, have no intention of actually playing the game properly. They come in, screw everything up, and then just leave, being replaced with bots that are absolutely worthless and you fail the mission, dragging this terrible progression system out even longer. I managed to just slog through and simply get through this terrible leveling system with the Psycho. About five hours after hitting level 30, a fire staff finally appeared in the shop for me. It had bad stats, but I snapped it up anyway and eventually spent my crafting materials to upgrade it to max level. And it only took another 40 hours of in-game playtime for a better staff to land in the shop for me to buy. So this is 40 hours of using my Psyker with a staff with terrible stats just waiting for that shop to roll a better item. What kind of progression in end game is this? And then even worse, when I upgraded that new staff after waiting 40 hours, one of the special properties I didn't like. It's just a complete waste of time on the staff. But I can't change this because in the crafting shop it has come in soon. Because the game is not finished, I can't change this. I've waited 40 hours, but one of the special properties is useless and I can't change it. Once again, leaving me to use a weapon that has compromises and I'm either waiting for what, another 40 hours for a new staff to drop, 
or I'm waiting for the game to patch in crafting that should be in the game at release. I have quit games for far less than this stupidity, but that core gameplay kept me going through gritted teeth as I continued. I wish I could tell you that the end game doesn't have any of the issues that that leveling up process entails, but poor and baffling design choices continue even into the end game. The mission selection being one of the worst offenders for multiple reasons. It only displays a small selection of missions, most of which you don't want to do because they're not the right difficulty for you. There are also a lack of maps and content at launch. This means it's not going to take you much time to start playing the same maps over and over and then feeling really similar. And this is made even worse because from launch until that update in February, maps had a huge uptime, up to 100 minutes. If you had a secondary objective you needed to complete, more on that shortly, or it simply had the modifier you enjoyed, you could end up doing the same map three to four times in a row. And then even worse, the same map could roll twice in a row, making you potentially have the exact same map for over three hours. The mission selection screen can also just not work at all, just not displaying any mission or it refuses to display a mission you know is there. You've literally just been on that mission, you saw that it was in the rotation for say 100 minutes, you've just failed it or you've just completed it, but you can't go back on it because it's just not displaying anything. Again, it's just running into these bugs and issues and combined with everything else, it just wears you down. And like so many of the issues in Darktide, they compound each other. It's like an avalanche and they just build up more and more momentum because the poor mission selection is exacerbated with the lack of maps at release and then becomes even more of an issue when we consider weekly assignments. There is a shop which refreshes daily, it has better rarity items, but they're still beholden to the complete RNG on the stats, perks and blessings. This shop requires a special currency that you can only unlock each week. And this is only unlocked by completing the special assignments. And once you complete all of the special assignments assigned to you, you get a bonus 1000 currency, which is really strong, especially at the start of the game. With good items costing between say 2000, 3000, maybe a little bit more, this will require a week or two, especially if you're completing all of those assignments for that bonus before you can get to that amount. You can only re-roll a mission three times and then it stops, potentially leaving you stuck with say more grindy assignments such as complete 25 missions with each mission being 20 to 40 minutes depending on difficulty. Now there is so much wrong with this system, it nudges players towards playing lower difficulties that maybe they don't want to play just so that they can grind out this currency. And also it promotes those issues with the mission selection because you can end up playing the same map over and over again trying to grind out these assignments. And to make this worse, the currency of these assignments is not cross-class, meaning you could potentially get complete 25 missions and you'd have to do that across all four of the classes, meaning you need to complete 100 missions in that week. Now this might seem bad enough, but it actually gets worse because the game won't actually let you complete an assignment to get that extra 1000. Because you might get stuck with say, complete secondary objectives in a certain mission type. Now you might think that, that doesn't sound that hard, unless the only mission that you can do in that difficulty is difficulty one or two. It's just gonna be completely boring as hell. Or your mission is on the list, but it's been rolled with no secondary objective. So you just can't get any progress for your weekly until it is rolled with a secondary bonus. Now the weeklies refresh each Sunday night. So if you've been busy during the week, logging at the weekend to try and complete your weekly on one character, let alone multiple characters, yet the mission you need is not on the list and you can't actually get your bonus. It's just a surefire way to annoy your player base and make them angry. The player can't do anything to ensure the mission is there, it's all on the roll of the dice whether they can complete their weekly assignment or not. I quickly realised the daily shop, like the hourly shop, is mostly trash and stopped worrying about completing all of the missions. Instead I just rolled as simple ones as possible because I could play the game how I wanted to play the game and slowly gather that stockpile. 
Newer players though, who are fighting their way through to try and get good equipment, going up against all of these issues with the hourly shop refresh, just desperate to try and get some decent items, they might be relying on this daily shop. And yet the game has the potential to simply say to them, no, you cannot get this plus 1000. I will not allow the missions to roll for you to do this. Come back next week and you're stuck with the rubbish items you have. This is just absolutely infuriating. The player is left with this really good core gameplay loop, but these other mechanics, especially in the end game, which just cause all of these other issues, the item progression, the map selection, the crafting system, the infuriating mechanics, it's all made worse because they're all linked together and it just brings down and tarnishes that core gameplay loop. The player is fighting against a terrible implementation of the item shop, desperately trying to beat the RNG and that timer to get some good equipment. The player then needs to try and manage the terrible implementation of the weekly assignments, and that's just so that they can get a tiny bit more chance of getting some good items. But then the player needs to face off against the terrible implementation of the mission selection screen just so that they can try and get those weekly assignments, just so that they can beat the terrible item progression. And this is all made even worse because at launch and for the first three months of the game, there was only a limited crafting system in place, making a lot of the items you get really hamstrung by poor blessings. This combination of mechanics is absolutely toxic to this game, and we can see why the player base has absolutely nosedived in the first three months since launch. And as much as I say the gameplay is fantastic, there are also stupid issues that even impact that core gameplay experience. We have barrels ending good runs that were entertaining and fun, and they just end up wiping the team. There's the general stupidity of ledges and holes to fall through that once again could just end a good run in such a lame way. Having zero iframes or invincible frames when being revived can just cause issues and then you just go down and there's nothing you can do about it. Audio cues just being terrible with the potential for a unit to sneak up behind you and just completely wipe the run. You also have spawns popping in just to completely ruin your day. And again, it's hard to mitigate or plan for this. And you have revive locations, often being ridiculously far away. And you just sit there for ages, waiting and waiting. Made even worse if the mission then fails anyway. And it's so painful because every time you hear another horde coming in, you know it's going to take so long for the remaining players to try and fight their way through and then come and rescue you. And the cherry on top of all of this is summed up in this eight minute clip. I've sped up sections, but it can highlight just how bad Dark Tide can get. And even worse, this happened after the huge patch at the end of February. I get a server disconnect, so I need to load back into the hub area, which takes time, queue again, which takes time. As I'm loading into that next game, the game crashes the desktop. I now need to load the entire game again, get back into the hub area again, back in the queue again, only to join a mission that has already failed, likely because of the terrible bots that died in seconds. And then I finally managed to queue again and get into an actual game to play. This actually took eight and a half minutes before I could get into a game and actually play. I've spent a lot of time going through my experience so far, but I hope you can understand two things now. Firstly, why the player base dropped so massively. Those 100,000 players that picked up the game, they faced performance issues, crashes, bugs, terrible game mechanics for impact, leveling and end game progression, whilst also having frustrations in gameplay instances such as ledges, barrels and bots. But secondly, why players are still playing the game and defending it? Because those players enjoy the fun visceral melee combat, satisfying ranged weapons, a challenging difficulty curve that requires good player skill and working closely as a team.
We've spent a lot of time looking at where the game was and how it got to these negative reviews and a tanked player base. Let's shift gears now and look at where it currently is and where it potentially is going. With the massive patch in February, I'm pleased to report that some of the issues have improved, although often this is a plaster over a much larger crack. Bugs continue, with some of them being pretty game-breaking and jarring when they happen. You leave me no choice! Other bugs continue and they are just annoying, but it still is a detriment to that overall playing experience. Where there is a big improvement is being able to buy any weapon for your class. There are now more missions on the mission selection screen and they are rolled more often. This makes it far more likely to get into a game that you actually want to play. Weekly assignments have also been made easier and you can re-roll more than three times now. You are still beholden to the RNG of the mission selection screen, so you can still end up with absolutely no missions on the difficulty you want to play, but there's more chance you will get there in the end. Crafting has finally been implemented where we can change our blessings. We can also save good blessings on what would be poor statted items to use on better ones later on. And you get an item guaranteed on every successful mission. All in all, this puts those toxic mechanics into a much better position, but it also opens up new issues. The end game has shifted slightly. You will still be waiting on the shops each hour, but you can buy any weapon you want at any time. This opens up a new problem though, because the weapons are still rolled with RNG. This promotes just sitting there, buying the same weapon over and over again until you get that near perfect roll or run out of money. This can take ages to do, and then I need to sell all of those rubbish weapons I just got. It just feels really silly and a bit counterintuitive to do this. This system is better than what was in the game before, waiting on that shop every hour, but you can see in this clip, it's not exactly a good mechanic or implemented well. The odds are also stacked against you because once you get this really good rolled item, you then need to upgrade it. Only one perk and one blessing can be changed, meaning you might spend ages rolling the item and then spend your crafting materials to upgrade it only to get two bad blessings rolled and then you need to start all over again. Refining perks on items is also similar in being counterproductive as a game mechanic. The cost to refine reduce each time to a point where it eventually becomes free. At this point you are simply rolling for no cost, waiting to get the perk you want, but also rolled at maximum strength. This can take ages to do, it's not fun and quite frankly it's just stupid when you sit there rolling over and over again just trying to get something instead of 4% you want it at 5%. It's just really stupid. Our prayers have been answered and what do we have here? Praise the Omnissiah. These gripes aside, the changes in the February patch have restored some of that balance between enjoying the core gameplay experience and fighting these toxic mechanics for getting away of that. I would say those mechanics are now annoying rather than how toxic they were before. Personally, I think the whole item progression and crafting system needs to be ripped out and a new one put in place. But the current system does work even if it is janky as hell. Darktide is far more enjoyable now than it was before. But make no mistake about it, if you pick it up, you are effectively playing a game that feels like it is in early access. If you can get past all of the annoying things and issues, you will have a good experience, but it is going to take time for Fat Shark to finish Dark Time. I personally think Fat Shark released this game 12 months early if not 18 months. The fact that the game came out in November, but in the developer blog, they state the crafting features weren't finished internally until December, and then they started to hit their internal testing. 
This is when they realised it wasn't good enough and they needed to iterate it further. This is an acknowledgement from Fatshark that they pushed out this game early. If the stamp of coming soon in the crafting shop wasn't enough to be clear for everyone to see that anyway. If Fat Shark had been honest and said the lockdowns hit them hard, they were behind and needed more time to bring the game to life, players would have respected that. Fat Shark could have said that they thought the gameplay loop was in a really good place, but they were going into early access for 2023, aiming for a 2024 full release because they wanted feedback from the early access players. They wanted to make the game great for when it released in full. They would have got less sales in the short term, but they would have controlled the long term narrative. Any moaning about the things that I've gone over in this video would have had a simple answer. It's an early access game, updates will come, but that core gameplay loop, it's so fun if you can get through these other systems, which they will definitely update before it goes to launch. Simple narrative controlled. As it is, the community anger has driven that narrative. Many players have lost faith and will not be returning to the game. And because of the negative reviews, others will never buy the game at all now. And this is really sad because I've said many times the core of this game, that core gameplay loop is actually really good. And I want to experience this without the bots. I want to experience this with more players and I want other players to keep on coming back to this game. But the reality is Darktide is in a position of needing bug fixes, a desperate need for performance fixes, a reworking of core systems, and need for a better mission selection, not just plasters over the cracks with additional maps being put into the rotation. Plus the fact that a whole bunch of character feats and item abilities don't work at all, or don't work correctly, or need balancing. All of these things are going to take iterations, it's never going to be done perfect the first patch, it's going to take additional patches and hotfixes to get this to a place where it's actually going to work. This all sounds like it's easily going to be the rest of 2023 that they're going to be trying to address these issues and bring all these updates together. And none of what I've just spoken about actually covers what is really needed for the end game, which is a lot more maps and content to do and consumers to play it. And beyond even these fixes or the additional content that we need, there are other bigger questions. How are they going to go forward with cosmetics and monetizing the game? Is the season pass going to be a paid season pass? And is content such as new weapons, maps and classes, are they going to be locked behind it? The decisions that Fat Shark makes on these might just finish off the game, even if they do manage to move quickly with patches and content to bring players back. Despite my rants in this video and the issues I faced in Darktide, for the most part, I've enjoyed myself and I still log in and enjoy it most days, even with fighting my way through the annoyances and the bugs. Now that might not be your experience. People have a different tolerance level to certain things. I normally have a super low tolerance to crashes and silly progression systems, but I personally got past them with Darktide. I look forward to the terrible systems being fixed so that I'm not struggling to enjoy the game and I desperately want additional maps and content. But at the moment, when I log into play, I know I'm playing a compromised, unfinished game. It makes me sad that with such a good IP with 40k, a universe that consumed so much of my childhood as I collected, painted and battled with the miniatures, and it's come to life here in a game format of a horde shooter that I absolutely love. But poor choices by the developer have delivered a shell of a game that could and should have been much better. I really hope Fat Shark can deliver something good at some point and save Darktide in the future. I don't want this game to die and I want to play it more and with an active player base. I just fear that Fat Shark might have already done the damage and they did it themselves. I'm not angry with Darktide, I'm just disappointed.